Today we're going to talk about the top 5 game engines you can use to develop your game and why you should use them or different versions, so stick around for this. Today we're going to talk about the next step in developing a game. You got an idea, but now you need an engine to develop on. Before we get talking about this, I just want to remind you all that a link to the Discord is in the description where you can talk with other developers and other game enthusiasts like yourself. Or you can subscribe to this channel and continue to watch the great library of game jolt games that we find and all the developers that we interview and talk about. But either way, let's start talking about some engines. The first engine we're going to talk to about today is the Unreal Engine 4. Now why are we talking about this one first? Well personally I'd really like to see more games developed on the platform. It's a beautiful platform. I've seen tons of great games come out of this platform, especially I gotta, I gotta give a shout out to one of my early games that got me into gaming so much. It's an iOS game called Infinity Blade. It was, it was beautiful, way ahead of its time in my opinion, for the iPod Touch actually. Fantastic combat style game, swiping for dodging and attacking, it was, just look it up, it looks fantastic, it played fantastic, but anyways, so things you want to know, what do you have to pay? Well, it's free, um, I've heard that there is a $3,000 cutoff, like when you sell a game and you make $3,000 in one quarter, that's when you have to start giving 5% of your proceeds to Epic, but that's only 5%, that's, that's hardly anything, and it's a free engine. It's a fantastic engine for free. It used to be a monthly subscription, but they decided to make it free. Personally, I think this is a great engine, and again, I'd love to see more developers using this. There's quite a few conflicting reviews about it, though. So be careful when you're researching what you want to do in this engine or where you're going for your information on this. I tried to learn it. It, it was pretty difficult, and that's one of the biggest uh, hindrances for people using this. But it's got a very active community, it's got visual scripting, which is very nice, and it's got amazing graphics. The downside to this is there's not very good mobile performance. I only brought up one game that was really good, but the rest really, it, it's, they struggled. They really struggled. There's also a lot of, like, really poor documentation in the source code for it because a lot of it is developed or generated by the engine for your game specifically so it's hard to document that stuff it's also really hard for new developers to just pick up and use it's really complicated because you can do a lot with it the next engine i want to talk about is probably the most popular engine and that's going to be unity this is popular because it's free I think there is a paid version you can use, but most people just use the free version because it's pretty much good enough. The only thing that might cost you is there is an asset store. So for the most part these games are royalty free, but the assets might not be. You're really going to need to look into that when you're going to buy assets. Otherwise it's completely free. And I would definitely suggest this if you're just approaching game dev for the first time and you've never coded before. It's by far the easiest to pick up and use because there's tons of tutorials, there's tons of communities focused around helping people get into this, and there's a huge range of capabilities and platforms that you can develop for. And it was actually really difficult to find negative reviews for this engine, which is pretty surprising given how many people use it. The pros to this are it's a pretty approachable engine, and the asset store provides great resources if you're not good at making your own resources or you need inspiration. Just remember if you take assets that you don't have to pay for, you still kind of have to pay for it by citing your sources in your game. Do not forget that. You will piss them off. The downsides for this, uh, it's not really great to push updates to your game, like patches and stuff. You really have to get everybody to re-download the game to push an update. And also, the graphics are not that easy to implement from what I've heard. It's hard to make your own graphics for the engine unless you have a deep understanding of how to use it. But that's really the only concrete negatives I've been able to find.
The third engine I want to talk to you guys about is the Cry engine. Now this is also another super powerful engine, just like the Unreal and Unity. However, this one, it says some places that you have to pay $10 a month to use, but also some places it says it's free, so I'm not entirely sure exactly what it is. Although the game sales are royalty free. I have heard there's this pay what you want model, which means you pay over the normal amount, but you can allocate up to 70% of what you're paying to CryEngine's Indie Development Fund, which means it goes into a grant to help small developers who can't necessarily afford the assets they need, but are really good at what they do. So that's kind of a cool idea. I personally don't have any experience with the CryEngine. I didn't even realize it was a dev kit like out in public until I went and did research for this video. Uh, but apparently there's a huge community, there's tons of games being developed on it, there's a huge YouTube community for it. So I would definitely consider this a viable option if you're looking for something with a little bit more meat behind it and a lot more processing power than some of the other engines. Although I still think Unreal and Unity easily come close to this, but some of the, some of the engine specific things are very cool and some of them are a little bit more unique. But anyways, the pros to this engine is beautiful graphics, and it has a massive platform options, which is fantastic for new developers because it gives you options and lets you stretch your legs and try new things. Downside is, it's got a steep learning curve, and allegedly there's no Mac development support, which it didn't say that you couldn't develop games for Macs, it simply said that you can't develop on a Mac, which is weird and I don't know how trustworthy those reviews are. Alright, game development engine number 4. Now we're going to be talking about Game Maker Studio 2. Now, I know a lot of you have some very strong feelings looking at you, Dragon. It's okay. I understand, but I need to be objective here. Game Maker Studio 2 costs a one-time fee of $99 for the dev kit, although it does look like there's mobile expansions that you can purchase for a lot more money. Don't think you need those if you're just starting out, just my thoughts. It doesn't look like you have to pay anything after you've shipped a game, but it's also on the Steam page, so I highly doubt they're going to talk about that there. My thoughts on this are it's a great platform if you're serious about pursuing game development, especially as a beginner. You don't need to know anything about coding, because you can just use visual programming and drag and drop coding, which is super approachable and a really good way to learn how to program. But I would say if you're planning on only being a casual developer or you're looking for something with more options or you want to get in touch with the code, I would look at one of the engines that I previously stated because they're more powerful and they're free. So why would you pay for something when you can get a more powerful tool for free? Just saying. Although, again, I will say the pros are you don't need any coding experience and it's super approachable super active community, there's great tutorials online made by the developers of the engine, so you can pick this up real quick. I wouldn't be surprised if you could pick this engine up in a week and be able to make something pretty cool. Downside, the only real downside that I could find to this engine is it's really hard to justify that price when looking at the other game development options. But other than that, that's really all I can think of. And I'm sure Silver Dragon will give you some cons in the comments below. So that might balance it out a little bit. Alright, fifth and final game engine. Now we're going to talk about the Hero Engine. Now this is another really high cost engine, but hear me out till the end of it. 
This one is a $99 per year subscription, however, it ships with support for online MOBAs and MMO games. It already has the net code down for you, it already has all of the social elements of it. You just need to create the game, and it looks incredibly intuitive. It looks like it's just drag and drop programming, which is super easy. The graphics are not nearly as powerful as some other engines, but it seems like this is ready-made for you to be pretty good at making MMOs as long as you have an idea. I think Unreal Engine and the other ones have the options for MMOs and MOBAs, but I feel like you'd have to put a lot more work into it because they don't ship with targeting for these genres. The pros that I found for this is it has real-time development, so you don't need to do builds, you just drop something down and click play, loads up and you're good to go in a couple minutes. And it already has that network built in, and it has a really active community. I think almost all of these engines have really active communities, which is really cool because you can get help from just about anywhere. Downside. It's really expensive, especially for what it's trying to do. And apparently it has its own special language developed for the engine, which there's little support for, so that can be quite the downer if you're trying to look at the code aspect. Also, there's no DirectX 11.1 or 12 support. The latest version it supports is DirectX 9. Alright, so I hope you guys liked this little talk on game development engines, and I hope you learned something from it. If you did, let me know in the comments below. If you like this conversation and you want to see more like it, remember to hit that subscribe button and that like button to let me know that you like it and you want me to keep going. But in the meantime, guys, please take care of yourself, and I will see you later.